Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing three of my viewers' gotcha characters. So let's get started. Also, if you want information on how to submit your character, there's information in the description. The first character I'm drawing was created by Mel with a smiley face. <laughs> the character's name is Mel. She's nice and friendly and loves the color green. And she also likes macaroons. So let's start drawing Mel. So like with my previous gotcha character videos, I'm starting in the line art phase. I don't show the sketching uh, for these pictures because or else this video would get super duper long. And so I start with the line art phase. In Mel's description, it mentions that she likes macaroons. I'm assuming she means macarons. Uh, macaroons are like, like this. I'll show a picture. And macarons are like this. Uh, but a lot of people call macarons macaroons, so I'm assuming she means she likes macarons. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I wanted to include that in the picture, and when I was searching people eating macarons, uh, I got a lot of pictures of people holding them up to their face and like covering their eye, and I thought this was really, really cute. And so I decided to draw Mel holding up the macaron up to her face, and she's looking all cute. <laughs> To make the macaron cover her eyeball, I had to make it really big because my characters have pretty big eyes. And so the macaron is kind of large compared to ones in real life, uh, but you can kind of make them whatever size you want, so it's probably okay. <laughs> I've seen some pretty big ones before on like cooking shows. So that was my idea for this picture. Also, Mel is super duper cute. I love her color scheme. I love all the browns and the light greens, and she's just super cute. I also really like her facial expression. In my drawing, I decided to have her smiling because I thought she'd be really happy about the macaron. And so, yeah, I decided to have her smile instead of have the facial expression she has in the example that was sent to me. Also, her hair was really fun to draw. I had a lot of fun drawing her super duper big pigtails. Uh, they were really fun to draw. Now I'm moving on to the coloring. I skipped me doing the base coloring because that's pretty boring because I'm just filling in the colors. Uh, but now I'm moving on to shading the picture. And as of right now, I'm missing some of the footage. I'll try to find it and insert it in if I can. I don't know if I just forgot to record or something. I basically skipped shading her skin. Huh, if, I'll, if I find it, I'll put it in here. <laughs> Right now I am coloring her clothing and her clothing was fun to color. I made the white bits kind of a creamy color to kind of warm it up a little bit. Now I move on to shading her eye a little bit. I had the highlights a little bit later on. Now I'm moving on to her hair and her, there is a lot of hair to shade and color and so I was trying to get all of that done. For the highlights, I make a whole bunch of tiny strokes in the direction that the hair is flowing. And I just kind of keep doing that all over the hair where I want there to be bands of highlights. Also, in the next gotcha character I draw, I kind of figure out a way to add highlights that I really like. Um, so I'm excited to talk about that. Now I'm moving on to adding a bit of the shading to give her hair a little bit more depth. I'm really happy with how her pose turned out. I feel like she looks really cute. I tried to make her head kind of tilting a little bit. And I'm really happy with how the hand turned out that's holding the macaron. I feel like it turned out kind of nice and I'm pleased with that hand. <laughs> also, when I saw this character, I knew exactly what I wanted to use for the background. I had, there's this pattern in Clip Studio that has a bunch of macarons. And I'm like, oh my word, I finally get to use this cute background. <laughs> I've always wanted to use it, but I thought the macarons were a little bit random, but they totally fit this picture. <laughs> so here's the finished picture of Mel. I had so much fun drawing her. Now we will move on to the next character, but before we do, I have something to say. People often ask me a lot of questions about drawing digitally. Learning to draw digitally can be really tricky because there's a lot of information to learn. But there is something that can help you on your learning journey, and that is Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning platform with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. One class I'm really interested in is Color Masterclass Simple Steps to Create Vivid Art by Vic Donai. I always love learning more about colors. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to all classes, all 25,000 of them, and you can get all of these classes for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Also, because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in the description and get two months for free. So sign up for your free two month trial today and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So without further ado, let's see whose character I'm drawing next. So next I'm drawing Jackson Thompson. He's 19 years old. He likes soccer, the color green, and playing video games. So for Jackson, I mentioned that he likes playing soccer, and at first I thought about maybe drawing a picture of him playing soccer, uh, but that seemed to be kind of complicated. And like I've mentioned before, since I draw three of these characters in one video, uh, I have to keep things kind of simple if I want to get everything done in time. And so I decided to draw him holding a soccer ball kind of at his side, and he's looking at us. That's what I decided to go with. Um, but I actually do quite like his pose. I like how he's holding the ball and everything. <laughs> uh, Jackson is really, really cute. I don't get submitted very many boy characters, so I was really happy that I'm getting to draw a boy. I get submitted a lot of girl characters and not very many boys. Jackson is an older character. He's 19. A lot of characters that I draw are usually kind of in their younger or mid-teens, uh, but he's 19. So I was trying to draw him like he's a little older. I was trying to give him more muscles and making him look like he's older. <laughs> Um, his outfit's also really cool. I had a lot of fun drawing the hoodie that's wrapped around his waist. At first I was thinking about having the hoodie overlap the shirt, but then in the gotcha character it has the shirt over the hoodie. Um, so I decided to draw it how the gotcha character has it. Now I am drawing his hair, and his hair was kind of complicated. It's super spiky, and then we also have the ears. Um, I had to think a lot for his hair and how everything was working. <laughs> but overall, the line art went really smoothly and I almost forgot his tail. I don't know what it is with me. I always forget the tails of characters that have tails and I always have to add them in later. <laughs> So after finishing the line art, I did the base coloring. Also, you may notice I filled in the soccer ball with its pattern. I actually used a 3D model of a soccer ball and put it where I had the circle for the soccer ball that I drew. And this gave the ball its pattern. It was really nice and easy because I wasn't sure how I was gonna go about drawing the soccer ball pattern and having it look correct. Uh, so using the 3D model for the soccer ball was a big help. Now I'm going in and applying my cell shading everywhere that I want there to be harsher shadows. So like under the neck and on his fingers. Um, I'm having the lighting coming a little bit from above and to the left a little bit. Um, and this was really good later on, but I'll explain that later. <laughs> So now I'm moving on to shading his shirt and I knew shading his shirt was going to take me a while because um, I was wanting to kind of try to define his muscles a little bit. So like his pecs and the rib cage and his stomach area because um, like I mentioned he's older so I was trying to make him look a little bit more muscly-ish. <laughs> uh, I spent a really really long time on his shirt. Uh, and I was also looking at many different references online, but I was also kind of over defining the shading a little bit. I was trying to find that balance between adding shading, but not adding too much shading because I didn't want him to look super weird. Uh, so I had to keep playing around with the shading and everything. <laughs> um, right now I'm adding some more details to the wrinkles. Um, so yeah. I was kind of basing the wrinkles off of these athletic shirts my brother likes to wear. Um, he likes to wear them a lot, so I end up staring at them a lot. <laughs> and so I kind of know where the wrinkles appear. Uh, but I really like shading clothing, so I had a lot of fun adding all the different shading to his clothes. Now I'm going in and adding more of the highlights. I have more of the highlights on his upper chest and also kind of where his rib cage 
area is. I play around with the shading a lot of lightening it and adding and taking away. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of experimentation going on with the shirt. <laughs> So now I'm moving on to shading the hair, and like I mentioned earlier, I found a way of adding highlights that I really like with this character. So you may notice that the highlights are kind of moving up and down and up and down and up and down. So basically where there's a strand of hair, on the edge I have it go up and then towards the middle I have it go down and then I have it go back up again. And I repeat this for each strand, and I really really like how it looks. Usually I just kind of do kind of a uniform line across the head, but with this more up and down movement, it makes the hair look a little bit more like it has some form to it. And I don't know, I really, really like it. <laughs> and it just kind of reminded me that I never know when I'm gonna find a new technique that I like for coloring. Now I'm adding the shading to the skin. I add a bit of shading around his eyes and underneath his hair and also around his nose. I wanted to try to define his nose a little bit. <laughs> I'm also going in and adding more shading to his arms. And for his arms, I found it easier to apply a lot of shadow and then kind of erase where the shadow is uh, for the one arm. For the other arm, I did just apply the shadow where I thought the shadow should be. Now I am adding some more shading to his tail and his tail ended up looking really shiny. It was making me kind of laugh because it looks like he uses this really nice conditioner on his tail. <laughs> so now I'm adding some more shading to the eyes and his eyes are really cool. They have like diamond shaped pupils and I thought this was really interesting. Once again, I'm trying to mimic uh, the eyes of the gotcha character instead of using my own um, iris style that I usually use. Uh, and I always find this kind of fun because it kind of mixes things up and I get to try new things. I also apply some texture to the different clothing. So I added a kind of texture to the jeans to make them look a little bit more like jeans. And I also apply some texture to the hoodie and to the t-shirt later on. Now I'm shading the soccer ball. And for the soccer ball, I wanted it to look really dimensional and like a ball. So I covered it with shading and then erased the shading kind of in the middle. And then I also added a rim of highlight very subtly along the edges. And I also shaded in between each little line. Now I'm adding all the little details to his outfit, like the little lines on his collar and also the white stripes along his sleeves and the bottom of the shirt. Now I'm trying to figure out what I wanted to do for a background. I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I started looking through my asset library to see if I could find any backgrounds that work nicely. And I ended up finding one that I didn't dislike. So yay. <laughs> I just didn't know what to do for the background. So yeah, I just used one from the Clip Studio asset library. And the light is even coming from above and a little bit to the left. <laughs> so his shading matches the shading in the background. So I was really happy about that. <laughs> So anyways, here's the finished picture of Jackson. I am quite happy with how this picture turned out. I'm really happy with how his body turned out. That sounds a little weird, <laughs> but I am really happy with how the picture turned out and his hair. And yeah, I overall really like this picture. So let's see what character I'm drawing last. And the character I'm drawing is Mia-chan. She is 13 years old. Her hobbies are playing video games and art. She has fire, water, and ice powers. Mia-chan is so, so cute, but she also gave me so much trouble. <laughs> and I'm not sure why. I was just having such a hard time drawing her. I actually drew one picture before this one. I didn't finish it, but I did my super cleanup sketch and it was ready for line art. Uh, but I just ended up not liking the pose and it just looked kind of weird. And I don't know, I just didn't like the concept. I'm not gonna show it because some people will probably say they like the first one better. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you this one cause this is the one I went with. And uh, basically my idea for this picture is like she's kind of showing us her powers. So she has fire, water, and ice powers. She is only showing us the fire and water powers uh, because I wasn't sure how to throw in the ice powers. I guess I could have thrown in the ice powers with the water powers. Uh, but anyways, so her one hand is kind of pointing and she's going to have like a little flame coming off of it. 
And then she's holding out her other hand and maybe she had some water in it and she's kind of controlling and bending the water and it's kind of floating. Uh, so yeah, that was my idea for the picture. And I have her looking kind of nervous because she's supposed to be kind of shy and the gotcha character looked kind of shy and nervous. And so that's the kind of facial expression she's making. Also, I'm really happy with how the hand that's controlling the water turned out, the one on the left. Uh, I quite like that hand. I'm not a super big fan of the hand that's doing the fire. Like it's okay, but they're just, it just looks like it's a little off. <laughs> Uh, I'm also adding all the little details to her outfit. I was having a really hard time with her suspenders for some reason. I don't know, her suspenders kept giving me trouble and yeah. <laughs> but I think I eventually got them to work, hopefully. But overall, the line art went pretty smoothly. Also, since she is only 13, I was trying to draw her proportions a little bit smaller. Uh, so to make her look kind of younger, uh, a lot of my characters are kind of mid-teen and some of them are kind of younger teen. Uh, but I always have a hard time drawing younger teens because like you want them to look a bit younger but not like fully teenagery. Uh, but I hope I succeeded. <laughs> her hair was really, really fun to draw. She has a ton of hair and it's super duper long. Uh, I always really like drawing super long flowy hair. Also, I'm really happy with how her ears turned out. I have a hard time drawing ears and making them work, uh, but I feel like Mia-chan's turned out pretty cute and I like how her ears turned out, so yay. Uh, right here, I was trying to get an idea for the fire and the water and how I wanted all of that to work. At first, I was trying to just use a water brush, but I didn't like that very much. So I scrapped that and draw my own water later on. So after I finish the line art, I move on to the coloring. And now I'm just adding the cell shading for where I want all of the harder shadows to be. Uh, for Mia Chan's shading, I wanted it to be kind of lighter and there's not like a super strong uh, light source. It's pretty neutral, just kind of coming from above. And for the background, I wanted it to be a mixture of blue and orange. Since she has fire and water powers, I thought it'd be kind of cool to have the background split into orange and blue. I actually end up swapping the orange and blue because I make the blue on the fire side and then I make the orange on the water side just to give a little bit more contrast. Now I'm moving on to shading the skin and I applied a whole bunch of shadow and then erased where I didn't want the shadow to be. And this was really quick and easy. I felt like it would have taken me a lot longer to shade the skin if I was applying the shadow to where I wanted all of the shadow to be. Uh, but it was a lot easier just to erase where I didn't want the shadow. <laughs> Oh, and here I'm also adding a bit of blush to her cheeks and her nose, and I apologize if you can hear the train. <laughs> now I'm adding some highlights to the skin uh, just to make things pop a little bit more and to give a little bit more dimension. So now I'm moving on to shading her tank top. Also, I always have a really hard time drawing tank tops. I'm not sure why. <laughs> they always give me issues, and I always think they look a little weird when I draw them. Um, but adding the shading was fun and I enjoyed shading the tank top. I did my method of applying the shading and then erasing the shading where I didn't want it. And so I have a lot of highlight up on her chest and also kind of on her lower stomach area. And then kind of underneath her chest, we have a bit of shading to define her chest a little bit more. I also applied some shading to her skirt. Her skirt is super cute. Also, I did play around with the colors a little bit. I made the tank top a little bit darker than it was for the gotcha character. The gotcha character had this super bright pink and this super bright purple, uh, but I thought that'd be a little bit overwhelming, so I made the purple a little bit darker, and I also toned down the pink of her skirt just a little bit, uh, and this just helps the colors not feel so overwhelming. Now I'm moving on to shading her hair and I used the same shading method that I used for Jackson. So I make it go kind of up towards the edges and then kind of down in the middle. I really like this method of applying highlights. So after shading the hair, I move on to her eyes and she doesn't have any kind of pupils and it's just kind of a pink gradient in her eyes. Uh, I really quite like her eyes. They're pretty. 
So after shading her eyes, I move on to doing the little effects for the picture. So for the fire, I'm shading it orange and then I apply some yellow and then some red towards the edges. And with fire, you basically just want it to get more white towards the middle and more red towards the edges and that kind of makes it look like fire. I really felt like I knew what I was doing for the fire because I once had this picture that had a ton of fire in it. And so I felt pretty confident when coloring the fire. However, coloring the water was a different story. <laughs> uh, I never really draw floating water and so this was kind of tricky. I was looking at a lot of references while doing this and I was trying to shade it and make it look like water. I wanted it to look kind of transparent and so to do this I lowered the overall opacity of the water once I was finished with it but I also have it get darker where the front part of the water is overlapping the back part of the water but then I have the back part of the water be lighter than where it's overlapping if that makes sense and this kind of makes it look like it's a little bit more transparent because it's getting darker in the spots where it's overlapping. <laughs> I was also just trying to give a lot of contrast and shade I was kind of surprised by how much shading there is in still images of splashed water uh, but there's quite a bit of shading in it and highlights and so I was trying to add all of that uh, but shading the water was really fun I had a lot of fun experimenting with that so here I'm starting to play around with the background a little bit more I wasn't sure how I wanted to do it because I didn't want the background to be super like overpowering because Mia-chan doesn't have any blue or orange in her color scheme so it seemed a little weird to put it into the picture uh, so I wanted it to be kind of subtle but also not super subtle because Mia-chan's colors are super light so yeah I was just trying to balance everything <laughs> I ended up going with the star pattern and making half of the stars blue and half of them orange and then I also apply a really light color to the background and I thought this looked kind of cute and still made Mia Chan stand out a little bit. So here are the illustrations of the characters I drew in this video. I had so much fun drawing all of these characters and getting to draw their different poses and their different hairstyles and I really do enjoy these drawing your character videos because they do really force me to draw hairstyles or clothing or different poses that are out of my comfort zone or that I wouldn't have drawn if I weren't drawing your characters. So I'm really thankful for these videos and to all of you who submit characters. Thank you so much for sharing your characters with me. So that is all for this video. Also, don't forget to sign up for your two free month trial of Skillshare using the link in the description. And thank you so much again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!